This is a recording of the text, the Little Rock 9. Uh, this packet may look different than the one you received in class, but the words are all the same. The Supreme Court ruling in Brown versus the Board of Education <clears throat> was important because it brought great changes to American schools. Many people did not want these changes. For instance, most Southern states fought the order to integrate schools. Yet at first, Arkansas did not. In Little Rock, the capital of Arkansas, the Board of Education planned to slowly integrate the city's public schools starting in the fall of 1957. Little Rock officials chose one school to begin the integration plan, Central High School. At first, 75 black students signed up to go to Central High, but little by little the number decreased. The Board of Education rejected some students, other black students changed their minds. Many families thought it would be easier if their children just stayed in a black school. By September 1957, only nine of the original 75 students still wanted to attend Central High School. They became known as the Little Rock Nine. Elizabeth Eckford was among them. The governor says no. As the first day of school approached, more and more people in Arkansas spoke out against integration. Governor Orville Faubus was one of them. Faubus was an ambitious politician. He wanted to win voters to his side for future elections. So he decided to fight against integration at Central High School. The governor spoke to the people of Arkansas on TV on September 2nd, the evening before the first day of school. Faubus had ordered the Arkansas National Guard to surround Central High School the next day. He told the people of Arkansas that there would be trouble if black students tried to enter, enter Central High School. He said the National Guard troops would be at Central High to prevent violence, but Fabus really sent them to keep the black students out. On September 3rd, the people of Little Rock woke up to find 250 Arkansas National Guard soldiers around Central High School. The Board of Education asked the black students to stay away to prevent trouble. Elizabeth Eckford and the other eight black students stayed home. So on September 3rd, Central High remained all white. The segregationists thought they had won, but they didn't think that for long. A judge in a U.S. court ordered the governor to allow the students into school the next day. A missed call. For the Little Rock Nine, including Elizabeth Eckford, September 4th was the first day of school. The students' parents wanted to go to school with their children to make sure they were safe. Officials asked the parents to stay away. The officials thought a large group of black adults at the school would anger the white crowd outside. One black adult, Daisy Bates, agreed to go to school with the nine students. Bates was the president of the Arkansas NAACP. Black people in Little Rock knew and respected her. They trusted her with their children. On the night of September 3rd, Bates tried to contact the parents of all nine black students to tell them where they would meet with their children. Elizabeth Eckford's family did not have a phone. In the confusion of the evening, Bates forgot to get in touch with them. Elizabeth went to school alone the next day and faced the mob by herself. The other eight students were more fortunate. Two police cars picked them up and took them to the school. After the mob taunted Eckford, the other eight black students arrived together. They tried to enter the school too but the line of Arkansas National Guard soldiers also kept them away. News of the events in Little Rock was in newspapers and on TV screens across the country and in other parts of the world. People all over the United States saw incredible photographs of soldiers with guns and bayonets stopping black children from go going to school. They saw pictures of an angry mob of white bullies threatening Elizabeth Eckford as she tried to walk to class. President Dwight Eisenhower, too, watched the events in Little Rock. He was angry. For several days, the U.S. government tried to find a way to get the black students into school and to prevent more trouble. 
But the soldiers remained in front of the school. The black students remained at home. Ten days after the crisis started, President Eisenhower invited Governor Faubus for a talk at his vacation home in Rhode Island. The president tried to convince Faubus to accept the integration plan. When Faubus left, Eisenhower thought he had succeeded. However, when Faubus returned, Ar returned to Arkansas, he kept the soldiers around the school. The NAACP went to court again this time to get Faubus to let the black students into school. A U.S. judge ordered Faubus to integrate Central High. And on the night of Friday, September 23rd, Faubus went on TV again. He promised to remove the troops, but not because he suddenly agreed with integration. He decided he didn't need the soldiers to keep the black students out. The white mob on the streets would do that instead. Early Monday morning, the Little Rock Nine met at the home of Daisy Bates. Once more, two police cars, two police cars escorted the black students to Central High. The soldiers were gone, but the mob was still in front of the school. The black students arrived and quickly entered the school through a side door. The mob was caught off guard. No one was expecting the students to slip in that way. This made the crowd furious. People shouted insults towards the school. Some screamed to white students in the school windows, don't stay in there with them, come on out. The people in the mob were so angry that they attacked any black people they saw in the area near the school. Several windows in the school broken as well. After a few hours, the mob got its way. Violence around the school meant that the African-American students were not safe. The police removed them from the school and took them home. For the black students, the first day inside the school lasted less than three hours. Daisy Bates was furious. She said the students would not return until President Eisenhower himself promised that they would be safe. The President Steps In Governor Faubus allowed the mob to have its way again the next day. At this point, President Eisenhower was fed up. He called the events of Little Rock disgraceful. The president did not want to step in, but he had no choice. The governor was disobeying the law and getting away with it. A mob was running wild and people were getting hurt. On the night after the mob forced the black students out of the school, Eisenhower took action. He sent more than a thousand U.S. Army soldiers to Little Rock. He also took control of the Arkansas National Guard, Favis' troops. Eisenhower ordered the soldiers to make sure the black students got inside the school safely. The nine black students met at Daisy Bates' home the next morning one more time. This time, U.S. Army soldiers were in charge. A line of cars and Army jeeps with the nine black students inside rolled toward the school. At the school, 350 more U.S. Army soldiers with weapons drawn were stationed around the building. They were there to help the black students get in, not to keep them out. Inside Central High, the Army commander called a school assembly. All the white students attended. The commander told them that the soldiers were not there to hurt them. He warned the students, though, not to cause more trouble. The black students arrived and walked up the steps to the school. This time, the soldiers kept the crowd near the school under control and away from the school building. Inside the building, a soldier walked each student to class.